Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> what was that? Welcome back, Cotter's Welcome song. Back I, Cotter, yeah. Welcome back, Cotter. Yeah. For those that can remember that. Right. Uh, you know, I think Bobby Kennedy could probably remember that. Yeah. I think we're in about the same age, actually. So yesterday uh, feels like we took a day off, but we really just did one video over on Patreon. And we were running errors. And look, Rama is here. Yes, Rama did come to say hello, everyone. He's very excited to see you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. <laughs> He's so cute, isn't he? <laughs> he is a good boy. So we uh, basically had a visit from the guides uh, early morning. And they wanted us to get across some points. So I had a whole bunch of things lined up uh, as far as videos. And we're just going to roll with this first because I do always trust that what comes from the guides is uh, the most important because they're seeing it from a different perspective. So again, if, if you don't know exactly who we are, uh, Cindy and I basically are very, very spiritually orientated people. And there is a, a difference, obviously, uh, well, maybe not so obviously to some between spirituality and, <clears throat> and organized religion. Oh, yeah. Or organized religion is, um, to us, it's a completely different animal. And it's something we've both explored thoroughly and have decided we are definitely two beings that are highly spiritual. And we both have had different experiences uh, from what's accepted as the norm in society. But then again, when you really get down to it, uh, many, many, if not, it could even be the majority of people have these experiences, but then dismiss them or ignore them or then become so much part of the system uh, that they do things that hinder their ability to perceive experiences and so, you know, what I'm talking about is the fact that ever since Cindy was a little girl, uh, she saw dead people. Yes. I mean, think in terms of that Whoopi Goldberg uh, scene in the movie Ghost, where they're all lining up uh, to basically come be and visit her because they realize that she can see them and perceive them. And in fact, actually, we recently moved to a new location and there is a, a ghost, quote unquote, that followed us from the old house, which Cindy just shared with me today. Now, she could always see them. I could sometimes see them uh, and sometimes perceive them. But I've had so many uh, experiences through my own life uh, of seeing all different sorts of beings. I've woken up to a golden orb right over my head that I knew was a highly angelic uh, being that was there for me. And that happened uh, right at a time when I was really re completely rededicating myself to meditation uh, and a more Eastern, I guess you would say, approach to things, Eastern philosophical approach to things in my early 20s uh, and it was kind of a sign of hey you know I, I take it as a sign of hey you're, you're starting to get on the right track uh, because again we're never alone we're always surrounded by beings uh, many of which love and adore us uh, tremendously and I mean you guys too you're surrounded by beings that love and adore you wish that you could hear them and yet understand that most people can't clearly hear them. But all that will be changing as we go deeper and deeper into uh, what's not a Kali Yuga, as we are leaving the Kali Yuga behind. And of course, the control system is trying to make it so that some of humanity will experience nothing but a Kali Yuga for the entirety, entirety of the cycle. Mm -hmm. I think... So much of this revolves around perception and people's ability to perceive when certain blocks are removed. And when I say blocks, a lot of times I mean emotional blocks, things that have happened in their world, in their life that do not allow them to perceive these things, whether it be through trauma, it could be through like physical accidents, it can be physical trauma, emotional trauma. 
Um, this happens in a dark age. So it does block the majority of people off from their spiritual networking ability and that ability to see and perceive and follow through. But it is very attainable. You have to sit down and ask yourself, what do you want? What are you ready for? And I find mostly a uh, higher self is in charge of this. So if you're one who really wants to see, you really want to hear and, and you're doing the meditations, you're doing everything and nothing is happening, it could be higher self is saying oh no you're not ready because if you did see that alien you would probably totally freak out and end up in a hospital <laughs> so you're just not ready yet so i do encourage you to be patient learn to be with wherever you're at on this journey and accept it with a full embrace and enjoy it completely because it's with that acceptance that brings more more of what you're looking for Absolutely. So they wanted us to uh, share this, it, it, and this comes immediately to my mind. They didn't ask me to quote Dickens. That was just something that seemed appropriate from how they were framing uh, the time period directly ahead of us. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was an age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredulity incredulity it was the season of light it was the season of darkness it was the spring of hope it was the winter of despair and again it's all how we we view it when we look at it as okay let's take it as you know hey we're going into the depths of the tribulation period oh my god you know it's that period that's spoken of you know with, oh woe to you O earth and sea for the devil comes with great wrath you know, the reality is, and, and I do intend on literally putting up at some point in time, I, I expect this will be probably the largest, if we have the time, uh, volumes of videos going in depth into uh, the Bible and scripture just to show how everything is completely misunderstood on purpose. On purpose. This is totally purposeful. This is totally revision. And yet people will say, but how can that be? Because it's all happening just as it was said. Well, we'll, we'll reveal that and show you again how in many cases, everybody going back to the time of the, of the Roman Empire and when Yeshua did walk the earth or where some of these other characters did walk the earth. In uh, Old Testament times, everybody thought they were in the last days. Everybody thought they were experiencing the quote-unquote tribulation revela revelation. Uh, you know, this is something that is done in such a manner that it always fits and suits the particular time frame that we are in. And that's a big reveal because, again, we are under uh, a system that has enslaved the planet. We are behind enemy lines. It's even it, well known, you know, again, who runs the planet? Satan, even though Satan just simply means adversary. And Satan doesn't mean one individual. There, There's so much that is so completely misunderstood by the masses. And, you know, it's just starting... Uh, my third book in a matter of a couple of days uh, on all the differences in the Bible f as far as, you know, contradictions and what does it really say, mistranslations, etc., etc. And this was by another scholar who had spent, gosh, like 12 to 15 years in postgraduate studies all about uh, basically theology and eventually you come to the conclusion when you go deep enough you realize it's not to be taken literally and that you also realize that it's been twisted and distorted in such a manner and and consistently twisted and distorted in such a manner as to constantly keep people in a state of fear and constantly keep people fearful from discovering the truth. So, you know, again, we will be expounding on that in detail. <clears throat> what we do have is, though, it's all about perception. You know, some of the most challenging times can be some of the most rewarding. And spiritually, they are absolutely some of the most rewarding.
Well, yeah, you know, it's that it's that growth. It's that understanding. It's it's that um, realization of why we're here. Who are who are we? Who are we? What are we here for? It's understanding that we are each here for our own experience and it is experiential through love it is experiential through trauma it is experiential through all kinds of different emotions the human spirit is created to expand it's created to grow so that's like the one core element that we come here for is expansion and in order to bring expansion we must have duality with duality comes difficulties and with duality comes things that are really, really enormously wonderful. As we've shared, so we will reiterate it for uh, those that haven't watched every single video. Um, <clears throat> you are you are standing on the remnants of Tiamat, and Tiamat was viewed as the Mesopotamian mother goddess for a reason, because again, Mother Earth, Mother Tiamat, Earth is a relatively new creation in the bigger scheme of things if we look at uh for instance the the creation of our particular solar system oh yeah the, the earth is a relative newcomer because the earth was created from that that was tiamat and tiamat was uh, a much larger planet than earth and tiamat was on the outside of mars it was in between mars and jupiter where the asteroid belt is now well the asteroid belt is part of tiamat so the asteroid belt with earth would equate to the majority of tiamat and it's interesting because in uh the mesopotamian lore uh, tiamat is slain by marduk marduk the son of enki ah yeah there you go it's it's the old sumerian stories that do have more uh grains of truth in them but they are still a distortion too because again everything that we have in this time period is given to us again from the victors who are constantly rewriting the, the history and I think that really frustrates a lot of people because we're always talking about that we're always saying you know keep in mind everything that comes across the media whether it be good or bad it doesn't really matter understand it's coming from a control system that also <clears throat> loves to function through duality they love to swing the pendulum because that's what pedals their narrative forward so people are kind of sitting back saying well what am I supposed to believe well, this is where you get in touch with your inner self so that when you do go through paperwork and you read through history books and you um, read through any type of educational material, you're able to siphon that through your own truth detector and find that within yourself. That's the most important thing and understand there's going to be tugging in both directions. So you have to you have to weigh that. You have to weigh it all the way. It's a lot of work. You also have to throw away everything that you thought you knew. And keep in mind that that was very carefully crafted through controllers that want to control your mind and your energy. So Tiamat was <clears throat> viewed as a dragon and and really the dragon again is is a reference to that creative energy of which you know one aspect is the kundalini or that we can label it as the kundalini but it is a creative energy and again not all dragons are bad and in fact you know when we look to the ultimate enemy of of this uh, creation and the the ultimate enemy that is guiding the forces that ended up destroying Tiamat before it was recreated into the earth is an AI uh, it's an artificial intelligence which prefers to take the form of a black dragon and what it's doing is it's saying that it's taking uh, the place of natural creation and natural order Mm -hmm. It wants to copy. Its only ability is to copy. It is a very, I, I guess you could say it is a jealous entity because it wants what it can't have. And it's, uh, it's very consumptuous. You know, it likes to bring in energy. It likes to pull in energy in in ways that you and I might not thoroughly understand. But when I when I did view this thing. Uh, 
it is it's a black dragon and it sucks in energy and it wants to be it wants to be like creator source it wants to be in control of everything so it has created this 3d paradigm along with many ways to pull in people's energy so that it can control thoughts so that it, it can control actions because it, again it wants to be that source and you know it's not natural uh, as we, we put in Draco aliens and what do we get? Reptilian con conspiracy theory. This is because we are in, again, uh, we are under their control. We are in their system. How to spot the reptilians running the U.S. government. You know, this is the reality. And when we look to those that we would call the Draco and you know these are the beings that actually created that ai intelligence which ultimately enslaved them they now serve it they they created it it enslaved them they the draco then went and have been on this 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 war uh machine for a very very long time as when we talk about the earth and, and the destruction of Tiamat, the destruction of Tiamat was from what we can get less than 100,000 years ago. So it wasn't that long ago in cosmic uh, terms. And the earth was recreated by what the guides say is the super consciousness. And you can say that that is God. That is the real God. It's the source of all things. It's the super consciousness. It's the unified consciousness that's behind everything. So again, this is where you might have people that take uh, the Bible in a literal fundamentalist way and think that, you know, the earth is not, you know, millions, not even billions of years old. It's only thousands of years old. And in some ways, they're closer to the truth than the science is because it was recreated. And again, we, we don't have an exact date because time is, um, it, it's, it's really a construct of this uh, 3D, this particular density, but it seems to be somewhere in that 50 to 75,000 uh, year range uh, is what we've gotten. And, and that is, I would say, subject to change as we could find, as we find more details, we will share that with you but certainly less than six digits as far as time ago the super consciousness got together and the earth itself chose as as about two-thirds roughly of tiamat was able to be salvaged and pulled together into earth and then it was repopulated <clears throat> many people uh, and and we're not talking about the noah's sto story but again you could look at the noah's story in modern terms and say instead of bringing the animals onto the ark they're just taking dna samples to to use it later and and that is really much closer to the real reality you know i think so many of these things i i i kind of giggle at because i believe that you know i mean watching the noah story and they all went out and they got these animals to get along with each other and not only were they getting along they were paired up and they all just went up on the big floaty ark two by two with without any any argument or any, any disagreement but then w w when you start to understand the situation a little bit better you realize oh okay this is technology this is where they went out and they got samples from these animals because these beings were very advanced extremely advanced more advanced than than you and i can really comprehend we're we're not even supposed to be comprehending at that level you know we have been limited we do have um we have uh filters you could say filters on us so we're, we're not able to have this wide comprehension but yes, this is how that happened. It was about getting the DNA and the DNA to recreate what is here now. And then just to <clears throat> conclude with the, the Draco side of things, uh, from the information that we got, they were not even truly from uh, this universe. They were not necessarily uh, organic or a part or of this original plan. They somehow found the way to create a uh, wormhole or some sort of 
portal between universes and jumped into this reality. Which is, again, something that would not have been along the natural lines of this planet. It's like a crack, a crack in the matrix. You know, there is always people are looking for way. I guess you can equate it to computers and how hackers can go in there. And no matter how strong the firewall, there is always a way. You know, if there is a point A and a point B, it's just a matter of time before you find it. These are extremely powerful, advanced beings with, uh, I mean, they're so extremely smart when it comes to technology and understanding technology and AI, having this understanding. And they, you know, opportunists, you know, you can look at them as parasitic opportunists. They were aware of an opportunity. They wanted to get that opportunity because they could see, they could fit it on themselves like a glove and control everything to a very high degree and get that energy force that they needed for themselves and and for that AI dragon that controls them. And so when we look to uh, the pyramids, a lot of people have guessed there's got to be some sort of purpose to the pyramids. Well, yeah. They were literally put in place uh, to help the earth regulate and, and, and to ground and root. There's multiple, multiple true purposes, but we can view them uh, with uh, healing energy for both the planet and all those on the planet. Well, they hold a very powerful vibration. They hold a very powerful energy, and they didn't look exactly like this, what we see on this screen. They they did have like a white marble over the top of them. So this isn't even a, exactly the way you're seeing it now. But uh, as above, so below, I want you to remember that in all things, in all things, as above, so below. So what you see above the surface, there is an equilibrium <clears throat> below the surface. And so they were placed in, in uh, what we would call a golden age as, you know, the cycle of the yugas takes its effect. And I think that understanding the cycle of the yugas is, is key because that is part of the natural programming. It was part of the original plan for this existence is to experience periods of, of less density and periods of heavier density as just part of the regular program but you know again the draco and the ai and all those they've enslaved they were not part of that program no no not at all i mean this is something where again we have to understand there's a level of hijacking that's been involved but when we're looking at these pyramids and we're looking at that time when the super consciousness stepped in many different beings from various realms came in to bring help and they came in and they worked together they built these magnific magnificent structures and they weren't there just for looks they weren't there for so many reasons they were there to help the earth stabilize herself so what you see again what you see above the ground there is an equilibrium below the ground and these beings have scientific <laughs> study you know there's a good scientific and there's the uh, scientific scientific study where you could take advantage of things these beings being from the golden age and having a very uh, wide range of understanding and knowledge were able to come here and help earth anchor herself help her stabilize herself so that she could move into position and she could sustain life the way she does now yeah absolutely so you know again uh this is all part of of this the bigger cycle and the holy science this was a book by swami sri yukatswar who was the teacher of yogananda uh whose master lahiri mahasaya had a, had a visit from a quote-unquote immortal named babaji and Cindy has channeled Babaji, uh, and Babaji's energy is very, very uh, strong and intense and, and still very, very accessible. Extremely accessible. He's a very powerful entity with an energy that um, it's going to bring about a, a very... Um, a very powerful type of healing and if you're not quite ready for that healing it's it's almost like it, it is very difficult to encompass it and hold on to it i don't know how many of you 
um, could hear the the channeling of white buffalo calf woman, but she also has a very powerful energy. And to channel her, you're going to be pushing through yourself a, an enormous amount of healing. And depending on where we're at, this allows us to channel very clearly or it can bring about a lot of tears but channeling nonetheless and if this energy is flowing through you it's going to bring some type of healing <clears throat> absolutely and we've had some great questions really again on <clears throat> what's life like in the uh in the golden age and the silver age and it's fascinating because it, it's not just coming from uh, the Vedic sources. That though, when we give you information, uh, we're aware, I am more aware maybe than Cindy is, of all the stuff that's in print, as, as I've read thousands and thousands of books. Uh, I've been just a knowledge junkie, but I do also receive information from the guides myself directly and always have i just didn't hear them quite as clearly as cindy is able to hear them although that's even changing uh now which is to be expected because again we're, we're going deeper into the bronze age we're leaving the kali yuga behind and those that are not ladening themselves with uh alcohol and with all sorts of mind altering um chemicals you will be growing and your abilities to, to hear your guides are going to just increase over these times. It is all related to the procession of the equinoxes. It's related to the earth. Uh, you know, again, it's related to the sun's motion uh, uh, around uh, its counterpart, so to speak. And uh, it's related to so many things. Again, the Pleiades. Pleiades is a major settlement outpost for refugees from the Galactic War. And again, Lyra is one of the places where humans uh, have had the beginnings of their populations uh, and their civilizations. And, and many planets have been utterly destroyed in this density because of this war. When you see like the scenes from Star Wars, those might really hit a bell with you because they're triggering a memory in our DNA. And our DNA is not just on this uh, physical density. It, it, there's an etheric DNA as well. This is where energy healing really comes in and you get a deeper understanding so when we are working on people we are working in different densities and we're arranging that energy body and putting it in in a place where it is whole and it is complete and it is repatterned the way it was when one was born so we work on these energy bodies in the higher realms and this energy does eventually translate down and bring healing about to the 3d body which is you know it's just an extremely dense form but when you're able to repattern that energy it's like it's sending signals to the body and to the subconscious to help bring about healing and take on uh, various paths to do that so it is really curious when we work on someone sometimes we can bring instant healing other times if it is something that this person a lesson or part of their path they may have to go about doing certain things to bring about healing so depending on what their contract is that's how we gauge um, the healing and when it comes about, when it comes into play, how the healing comes about. But so many people, you know, when they're coming in for an alignment or some type of energy work, they experience profound, positive change and they get a lot of information. They're able to open up to their guides. They're able to um, have things occur in their lives that they never thought possible but it's because they were in alignment to begin with but there were some energetic blocks that we were able to remove and pattern to allow this information to come into the 3d realm absolutely and so when we look to the different yugas one of the, uh one of our family members joe free had put out there a question that i don't think we fully answered um but we'll try to answer that now because he was saying, you know, do we see light beings in, in the golden age? The answer is yes. You know, and you, and you may encounter them in other ages too. But they are more, much more common 
in the golden age because our own frequencies are higher so we can perceive them much much easier they will come through clearer they will uh, even take a, a sort of form even though they are ultimately just light and this is when we get our teachings uh, of a very very high frequency when we look to say again um, the root of the eastern philosophies which you know at the root at the core the teaching is that we are all one we are all one and and those teachings come from the golden age you know this the, that's that's a golden age realization so when you look at traditional monotheism which views god as something separate from uh, the creation and also separate from humanity that's not a golden age teaching that's a kali yuga teaching that that's a teaching of the system that's not the real reality it's a distortion because again if god you what you would call the creator is omniscient which means all knowing omnipotent all powerful omnipresent in everything there you go i mean that's it right there that's a very definition in everything so a singular being that you can name like in the Tao de jing one of the first verses says that the Tao which can be named is not the Tao. <laughs> it's so in other words you know that which is source if it can be named if it can be isolated if it can be brought down to being any sort of this is that then it's not that because it couldn't be by the very definition and and this is where uh, again you got to go a little bit deeper you have to expand your knowledge otherwise uh, you get taken advantage of and and it's through uh again as cindy would say you know one of her favorite uh quotes of yeshua jesus is my people die from a lack of knowledge because that's what the controllers are banking on that we'll just assume things as they're given without questioning yeah and and not without going deeper because when we do go deeper we we start to realize this is completely illogical this doesn't resonate this doesn't make any sense in fact it's completely contradictory and then you'll have some people that say well you have to have the holy spirit to understand it well you know what you're really saying is you don't have a clue that's and that's what so many bible scholars come to they come to the understanding that well you know it, it doesn't make sense as we take it so i guess it's got to be a divine mystery do i choose to still believe or not and and you know that's what it comes down to but the reality is it, it doesn't make any sense because it's a distortion and it is a contradiction and it's not the truth but the truth is actually far better than what is given to us from the controller's belief systems it's way better because we are already in in imbued with eternal life that's our very nature we are consciousness itself you know the body is just simply a vehicle this is taught openly in the golden age and this is still out there in the teachings that we receive in some of the eastern traditions or also in the hidden western mystery traditions the esoteric traditions because they had to go underground they would be persecuted and put to death by the system because this takes the power away from the system and this is the realization that is coming to the planet for those that will choose to be free and not to be slaves mm -hmm. i think if there is one thing that the controllers want to hold on to most it is the belief system that is their life blood that is their breath that is their being that is everything if only they can control the belief system because that's as important as anything else and i think so many people get afraid because they feel that mike and i are just taking away the bible but no, after much study and in-depth understanding, much meditation, we realize the controlling construct of the Bible. So we've stepped outside of that controlling construct because we want to explore our consciousness. We want to understand and see the different realms. You know, it's not a bad thing to utilize tarot to help yourself 
find understanding and find answers. It's not a bad thing to want to read the stars. It's not a bad thing to perceive different entities and talk to the elementals. These are not sins. This is part of our lives. This is part of our spirituality. We are spiritual beings. So of course, we should be meshing with the all. Of course, we should be exploring the all. Of course, we're all going to have different abilities. You know, it, it's not taking anything away from anyone. It's stepping out of the control matrix that has been created for you to control you and to control others. Because if, if you see one person step out of it, it's like there's 10 or 20 people that are so worried for them and they're so scared. But why? Why are they worried and why are they scared? Well, because they think that their soul is going to burn forever <laughs> in eternity. And that's just, that's, you know, when you run into a fear, a, a, a fear that puts you in a cold sweat or a fear that keeps you from doing anything, I say, take a close look at that. Why is that fear there? What, what happens if you're able to break through that fear? What do you gain? Well, you, you gain a whole lot of understanding of your own realm. You gain an understanding of who you are, where you're from. You get a lot of answers. And the control grid no longer has control of you. So, you know, again, and this is in Sanskrit, but what it's saying is it's, it's depicting the average human in each of the yugas. As you can see to the right, the small guy in the jeans, you know, that's us in the dark age. And then when you look to what you see represented right to the left, there we are in the Bronze Age. So what do we have? You know, if we have the average human between five and six foot tall in a Dark Age, then we might see seven to nine feet tall in the Bronze Age. We might see 10 to 12 feet tall or thereabouts in uh, or maybe even a little bit more in the Silver Age. And then we might see even up to 25 or 30 feet tall. And we have uncovered giant bodies all over the earth all over the earth varying sizes and again in the golden age if you have people that are 25 30 feet tall that's certainly large now Geoffrey had asked too and said do we actually have physical bodies in the golden age and and the answer is well those experiencing life on the planet uh, as uh, a part of the planet yeah we, we we still do have physical bodies but we do encounter light beings more often there's a less dense type of body there's a less dense that from what i was feeling yes so we are made up of the earth there is that experience where you're going to be able to interact with the earth and her creations so we have that but we also have the understanding and perception that there are other beings out there and there are different light beings that are able to come and for us to, you know, work with. So there's just a lot more. There's a lot more out there for us to embrace, for us to experience. It's, it's a much deeper, richer spiritual experience in the golden age. And there's, it's so much balance too. I got to say, uh, the balance is very, very important. Uh, people the way they are they need or they understand that balance is necessary so if someone is out of balance it's not up to somebody else to point that out to them it's like you can feel it it's like oh wow i'm out of balance i need to pull myself into balance so it's this it's this uh tugging and pulling of the soul to hold on to its balance not like we have here right here we have so much duality you know we have the the pendulum swinging constantly here in the dark age and boy does it swing wide but we're in the golden age that pendulum just barely moves and that's just simply a natural aspect of everything so i want to read this again from forbidden knowledge uh it's talking about this these yugas not from the hindu perspective or the vedic perspective but from the greek perspective because the Greeks talk all about this. And again, if you want to really go deeper, I mean, there are sources out there uh, that you can read and, and glean interesting nuggets from. Uh, again, the Greeks are really in line with the Vedic Hindu point of view. 
there's much more commonality than there there is uh, difference. So the golden age was before the time of Zeus. His father Kronos reigned over the golden age when men lived amongst the gods and there were no rules because everybody did the right thing. So the other way we can look at this is this is before the time of Zeus. Now the elder god Zeus they had a battle with the Titans. Now it's often thought of in mythological circles people that have studied comparative mythology on a high level that the titans represent natural forces natural order couldn't be any more truth than that absolutely it's it's all that's natural we're really when we're looking at zeus and we're looking at uh those elder gods those are really representing the forces of, of that which we would call the system. It, it's really the Anunnaki again, which under the control of the Draco, which is under control of the AI. So this is exactly what we're talking about. So w when the natural order reigned, what happened? Men lived amongst the gods. And really we should change that word gods to man lived with other extraterrestrials and other interdimensional beings because it was just known they were there. They were coming and going all the time. There was interaction between uh, beings living on the planet and beings that were off planet and, and just coming in to either trade or to to explore or to just you know see what's going on in this the corner of the universe. It was always spring. And that's because the earth didn't have its 23 and a half degree tilt. That tilt came about at the Younger Dryas event about 12,000 years ago when you know we have that big cataclysm and flood that's spoken about not just in the Bible but also in the Sumerian legends and also all around the globe. And there's been many different floods. And so some, some flood legends uh, will be referencing smaller floods, uh, but for the most part, when we're looking at that big global event, we're talking about the Younger Dryas Cataclysm, which wiped out most of life on the planet, which was induced by the system. It was not natural. This, this is the other thing to recognize. Just as they had destroyed Tiamat, they were intent on screwing up Earth as well. So, yeah, it was always spring because without that 23 and a half degree tilt, we're going to have peaceful weather patterns and we're, we're also going to have a more balanced um, season. We won't, we won't have the seasons that we had now. As they say, it was eternal spring. There are legends from many different sources that speak of a time before the moon was put in its place. Because the moon was brought into its position at that time by the control grid. So again, 11,700 years ago or so uh, is what we're talking about. And the moon has locked the earth into that 23 and a half degree tilt, which it does vary a few degrees uh, as we go throughout the procession of the equinoxes. But it does keep the earth in an out of balance reality on earth and it gives us the extreme weather it gives us the storms this is also where it's referenced in the bible that god because again there was a creation and many people talk about two creation stories in the bible because there really is there's a <coughs> creation and then there's a destruction and recreation and that's referencing tiamat and then referencing the recreation but it's also referencing the takeover um, by the dark control system. And then when the dark control system comes in, uh, instead of using the leaves and the plants as your medicine and the fruits as your food, as you would in the golden age or in the silver age, no, then it becomes blood sacrifice. Then it becomes you will toil for your food and you will have travail when you're giving birth to children and and god will no longer strive with humanity and and the lifespan of humans is set at 120 years that's that's the kali yuga and that's the control system artificially shortening our lives and then we see it goes on peace and harmony prevailed humans did did not have to work to feed themselves food was abundant 
even in this age, we could see how abundant food would be. Uh, they have to artificially uh, manipulate things to make it so that we have to work harder to, in order to feed ourselves. They lived to a very old age, but with a youthful appearance. And eventually they died peacefully as if falling asleep. Their spirits were said to live on as guardians of the mortals. Spirit guides. Hello. Oh, I don't, I don't believe those new age beliefs. Uh, yeah, if you only believe in the Kali Yuga beliefs, then I guess the Dark Age. So in other words, you believe in the mainstream media of these times, which is run by your Satan. You cannot get any more blunt and, and plain than that, but that is the reality. So how many of us still trust these, you know, three-letter alphabet soups? Well, those watching these videos don't, but then they still trust their... This is their same belief system. You know, the belief that humans were born into original sin and that only a blood sacrifice can save you is completely their belief set. It's used to give you, uh, it, what's the word? Uh, it's, um, it's gaslighting, certainly. Uh, it's narcissistic, absolutely. Uh, it is all about putting this mindset of inferiority on humans because they don't want humans knowing that you have more potential than they do because they've given all their potential away. In, this, in the Silver Age, Zeus overthrew his father, Kronos. So this is saying the artificial system took over the natural order of things and and ruled over the silver age and subsequent ages now this is again going from the greek mythology and in reality it was the silver age that they did start to infiltrate and they still and they started to work their way into uh control it was really not until the bronze age uh, that they started to get the upper hand and we have all all the different wars of the gods going on in the skies above us. And then the Kali Yuga, they're in total control. They withdraw because they, they don't even have to be around anymore. They leave you know their offspring uh, in their stead, their, the hybrids. And, and again, this is the cabal that we see. The ones that we see ruling uh, are, are basically the uh, bloodlines of of the Anunnaki uh, that are controlled by the Draco that have been taken over by the AI. So then man has to start to seek shelter, start to grow our own food. And it says Zeus destroyed this race for refusing to worship the gods. It's because we knew, we still had the memory of the fact that source is in us. We don't have to worship anybody if we don't choose to. And in fact, like when, when you look to what was going on in the golden age, it wasn't really worship. No, it was just calling on teachers in a respectful manner. Because again, these, these light beings would visit and would teach and guide. And other extraterrestrials would come and visit and teach and guide. So they were, they were addressed respectfully, but they were not worshipped. No, it, it's the dark uh, controllers that desire to be worshipped and and they desire to supplant the system and then the bronze age zeus created the first recognizable human this is genetic engineering this is where okay now uh, you know you have all these other species of hominid that are wiped out and you see dead ends left and right and this is because they're trying to make the perfect slave race and this race of men was destroyed by Zeus with a great flood. There is, you know, the end of the Bronze Age there that is talking about, again, the Younger Dryas uh, destruction. So, you know, and then we go on to the Heroic Age, which is interesting because what do you have left over? You have left over demigods. Ah, some of, some of the hybrids from benevolent beings and and again you got to recognize the dark system is, is going to always label things in reverse yes there were cannibalistic giants but all giants were not cannibals and so when you go to you know joshua looking and saying what do you see over there in the land of canaan canaan 
oh, we're like ants to them. They're all giants. And, and you get some people that say, well, that justifies the extermination of the Canaanites. No, what they were doing was wiping out the remnants of, of beings that knew that this whole system is, a tra is just a tragedy and a travesty. They were wiping out all the DNA that could spoil their plans. So this is exactly what we see. Again, during the Hindu Golden Age, people are said to be 30 feet tall, totally virtuous and wise. Lifespans are 100,000, and then it goes down to 10,000 in, in the Silver Age and 1,000 in the Bronze Age. So this is corresponding to uh, the patriarchs in, in the Bible, Methuselah and Noah and all these. Well, Noah is an interesting story, and, and Noah will be another video in its entirety, as it was based on Utnapishtim, uh, who is, in fact, uh, oh, that's a good story. And, and that maybe we'll do that one next, because it's a lot of fun. But again, this, this is the reality that we find ourselves in. You are in an intergalactic, interdimensional war uh, of epic proportions. You know, we always harp on staying or organic. Stay organic. Keep your DNA intact. And why do we harp on this? It's because we have a deep understanding that in this lifetime, we will be able to read our own DNA, follow that back to who we really are. And as you can see, these lineages, we come from some pretty powerful beings. But what do you think happens when they uh, do things to us to change that DNA? Are we still able to read it? It's almost like putting a kink in a book or it's almost like scribbling the book so you no longer know the language. So how are you going to read back? How are you going to pull that information back in if it's an actual disconnect, if they've created the disconnect at the source, which is you? Remain organic. Uh, do what you can to detox because these are all things that help us find ourselves, tap into our abilities, realize who we are and why we're here. They just really want that memory wiped out to a very high degree. And when it comes to the indigenous, they definitely have a bigger pineal gland that is more connected with earth, that is more able to speak to the trees, the animals, the birds, the, the water. You know, there's, there's indigenous people, there's called river readers where they could stand by a river and read what is going on all around the planet because they have that oneness with the planet well believe me they want all of this wiped out because they want complete control and, and it's just really a tragedy so remaining organic is really more important than just the surface oh you know don't eat anything bad well it's disconnecting you from who you are and this is going to be a completely uh, different video, but I just want to touch on it here. When we look at, uh, again, El and Yahweh, the question here is, is Yahweh and El the same God or different gods? This is, again, part of what most people don't understand. They, they just simply are told, if they, if they ever even discover this, because everything is Lord or God, it's, it's been translated. There are many words that are translated down to God or my Lord. But the reality is, you know, are they different beings? And the answer is yes, completely. This is not the same energy at all. And, you know, when you when you really go deeper and you got to go deeper, you have to look at what what the original Hebrew is saying. If we're talking the Old Testament and then you have to go in and, and learn what the Greek words are saying when we're talking the New Testament. Because again, the, these translations are all basically starting as oral and then they get written down at some point and then they get retranslated. And it's not even that, you know, again, this is scripture and it is to be, people take it as if it's perfect. It's not perfect. There are hundreds of co contradictions you know, all throughout the Bible, both New Testament and Old Testament. And we're going to be looking at exact uh, ones and in and, and big depth. But 
you know, when you look at it first, as this person saying, the name Israel, Israel, is not a Yahwistic name. And how many people that will say, profess a belief, belief in the Bible don't even know what you're talking about if you're talking Yahweh, Yahwistic or, or Eloist? They, they, they don't go that deep. They just simply take what the pastor, priest, or whatever, you know, term is, is being used says, and just go with it there. And if we're just looking at one line here, one line there, we have to compare, we have to look at the original language and then look at possible translations from the original language because what's been done is a usurpation of the original intent. El is the name of a, de a deity invoked in the name Israel, which translate may, may El preserve. This suggests that El was seen as the chief god in the formative years of Israel's religious practices. And, you know, again, it, it, it's been Elion, you know, the god the most high. El is, is a Canaanite uh, god. Again, the Canaanites were exterminated uh, by that which became Israel uh, through invasion and genocide. This is, again, what we see going on the planet uh, time and time again. Um, but when we see here, Yahweh is certainly a different term, and Yahweh is used in many different uh, spots in the Bible. And truly, if, if we um, understood that when we're reading lines and you see, you'll see Lord or God in different positions, and it might sound funny, it's because in one spot it might be talking about Yahweh, and in another spot it might be talking about El, and another spot, when it's bringing up Elohim, it's literally talking about the gods or the powerful ones, the mighty ones. They're not all perfectly interchangeable because they're not the same being or beings. As you see, Yahweh assimilated both the imagery and epithets once used of El. And we even see this in, in kingship. When one king supplants another, all of a sudden that king will take on the titles of the previous one. You know, so, you know, this is a tradition that's been passed on throughout history. And when Cindy looks at the energy of, of L, it's of a natural sort. She keeps getting the depiction of a cloud of some sort of almost program in the natural matrix. Yeah, that's that's the best way I can translate it. I keep getting shown this this white cloud, you know, with the, the blue sky, but this cloud it's like an information uh, source that anyone could tap into it has something to do with creation it has something to do with manifestation i it's a it's a very beautiful type of energy you know there's nothing nothing bad about it you know as far as bad is perceived it's just something that we can all tap into and and, and again you know as long as we remain organic we have this natural connection to this energy to this energy that is of a manifestation type of energy so i guess maybe it's the energy before things come into play you know is it, it it's it's just uh it, it's a thing <laughs> you know it is it's that consciousness it's alive so when we see like the Michelangelo depicting, uh, you know, God in the cloud reaching out to Adam, uh, this is more that L energy. And, and what people get when they, when they read certain parts of the Bible, because again, some of it's, it's going and tapping into the, the pre-controller traditions, they're feeling that. And, and you're feeling that more benevolent energy which is usurped by Yahweh who is completely different uh, Yahweh is a warlord uh, Yahweh is one of the uh, Anunnaki that has been uh, controlled by the Draco so you know again totally totally different energies and I hope this helps people understand why the Old Testament God seems to be so nasty jealous vindictive and genocidal and in the New Testament, for the most part, but not entirely, N not not entirely. I mean, if you look at the teachings of, of Yeshua Jesus, you know, in the Beatitudes, yeah, it's all love and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and, and it feels great. It resonates. But even in the New Testament, there's spots which we will bring up that shows that controller energy as well. 
And, you know, it's interesting, too, because there is one quote when the Pharisees are coming at Yeshua, at Jesus, and he even says to them, get behind me, Satan, because they're the adversary. They are the political, you know, religious power structure, you know, political and religion. You know, they are kind of two sides of the same coin. It really is. And, and again, he understood that this world is under uh, control of the dark controllers. Hope you guys got something out of this. Thanks for your support on Kofi and Patreon. Much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.